Hey there YouTube, and welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So today we're going to talk about do-it-yourself haircuts. And for me, it's pretty easy because I'm mostly bald. So I don't have a whole lot of hair up here. Most of my trimming is the sides and the back. And the nice thing about doing it myself is that it saves a little bit of money in the long run because I paid for clippers once. And then the current clippers that I've had, I think I've had for almost four years. And then mostly it's about every month I trim my hair down. So in the long run, I wind up saving a little bit of money, but it's not like I'm super styling. <laughs> and then there's also certain things that I got to look at. So there's ways that I feather my beard out. That way it kind of blends in a little bit better. So, and then um, in the video, I actually shot the bulk of this video about two months ago and some stuff's changed in the meantime. So when I shot the video, I cut everything really short and then I left the stuff down here kind of long, which I do normally, but this one I went deeper down the cheeks than I would, you know, when I normally do it. So in the video, you'll see that I actually go down pretty far and it causes like a big poof down here. So whenever you go to trim your beard, there's a lot of stuff to take into account. And I believe I go into that pretty good in the video, but it's just one of those things where everything takes a little bit of experience. So the fact that you're cutting your hair and you think you're saving money with uh, buying a pair of clippers, you might not be doing yourself a favor as far as looks go, if that's really important to you. And you might be better off just going to a barber or someone that knows better. Just because there's certain things that, hey, you know, you did this or you did that, that, you know, you, when you go out in public, someone might be like, uh, check that guy out. <laughs> so we'll get into the video. Check you guys later. Hey there, YouTube, and welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So today is the last day of the Rona Beard. I have a job orientation this morning, and I'm going to try and clean it up. That way I look a little bit more presentable, a little bit more business-like. Also, this is the beard pretty much early in the morning, so I've unstyled, haven't taken a shower yet with it. And then this will be the last view of it. So normally I trim the sides up here a little bit, thin it out. That way I don't have a whole lot of crazy hair like this up up here in the sideburn area and then um, I don't normally mess with anything down here so everything down here just grows naturally so its shape is just the natural shape so but today we'll be trying to cut it more than likely I'll try and do almost like a square cut so I'll come in about here and probably trim it uh, straight back and then we'll see how that goes I don't know if I'll wind up changing the plan in the middle and then maybe just trying to give it like a slant it all depends on how well I can see from the side to see if I can either cut the slant or if I've got to try and go with uh, plan B, C, or D. <laughs> so, but hopefully everything turns out all right. I know worst comes the worst. I have in the past just cut it all one length, uh, shorter length. But a lot of times when you use the little spacers for the, the clippers, you'll wind up getting long spots and short spots depending on how your hair grows. So the weird part about with how my beard grows or my whiskers come in and stuff is that everything pretty much grows normal downward on the sides, but underneath my chin, it seems like everything grows this way. So with everything growing this way, whenever I do trim from this side and then I trim from this side, normally I'll get a little bit of long spots and then it'll, it'll kind of peek out at the bottom. So it's really kind of strange the way it cuts. So, but uh, let's get to the trimming. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the trim goes. If it winds up not looking quite right, I'll probably give it a day or two and see if like my hair bounces back or if, how how it actually winds up laying in the end. Um, I'll just get it more or less roughly shaped and then clean it up a bit. And then we can always, you know, trim it up a little bit more tomorrow or something when there's time. So. So here we are in the bathroom. Basically, whenever you wind up doing um, that haircut and stuff, I always wind up bringing a, like a grocery bag, preferably one that has no holes in it, putting that in the sink, that way you need to catch the hair. That way you don't have a huge mess, the hair's not going down the drain causing a clog, and it helps in cleanup. <laughs> Makes it a lot simpler. So I'm gonna try setting the phone down over here. And then I've got the GoPro mounted up there. Let's give it another angle. 
and we'll go from there. So, the first thing that I always do whenever I cut my hair is I always use a set of clippers. Now, I recommend a really good pair. This is kind of one of those things where it's best not to skimp. And then also reading the directions on whatever you have to do with it. So, like this one has a power screw on the side. All right. So, if you want to plug it in your clippers and it makes a pretty loud clacking noise, you may need to adjust the power screw. So different models of power screws in different locations. The nice thing about the ones that have the power screws, it allows you to kind of turn that off because if you have got dogs, it can kind of bother them if you got other pets. Also, um, it's kind of freaky whenever you're in the middle of trying to cut your hair and then all of a sudden it's going whack, 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 whack. <laughs> so, but the one tip I would say is that whenever you do go to adjust it, um, check it so have it so that it's on and then uh, just flip it around a couple times because sometimes the angle that you have it at will dictate whether or not it makes that noise but you can hear the pitch change a little bit just in me turning this around and over so but um the other big thing with your um clippers is to recommend uh, you know use a little brush that comes with it to clean them up every time and then also oiling the blades before and after so another little trick that I found was that, especially with this pair of clippers, whenever I would trim um, my hair and on my head and stuff like that, it felt like there was something sharp and stabby. And basically what I did was I took these two screws loose and adjusted this upper blade. So one of the easy quick checks you can do is just, you know, lightly brushed against your wrist. Your wrist is fairly sensitive. So you should be able to tell, hey, this is gonna feel weird, especially when you don't realize how sensitive things are back here. But once you know that it feels good or it doesn't, doesn't seem to stab or jab in, in and stuff, you know that you should be probably good and it should be relatively easy to cut your hair with. So one of the first things that I do is that I look in the mirror and I try and figure out where I'm going to make the initial cuts. I like to cut my hair all the way down with just a standard blade set to the short setting. So a lot of them have a, um, a length then you can flip right here so you can either have it so it cuts it a little bit long or you can shorten it and then i like to try and cut even with my ear here that way i'm able to kind of set uh, like a, a cutoff line basically so an area where this is where my glasses ride right above my ear and because that's where my glasses ride it's really easy to have that be the main line and where my beard starts so um normally whenever i start a cut because I don't have much right here. <laughs> I always start in the center, just because there's been a few times that I've had a, um, a clipper die on me, and it's just from usage. So I've just had it for that long and stuff like that, and then it died, in which case you either have to hurry up and shave your head or run to the store with a hat on. <laughs> so let's get to cutting this real quick. And I always leave my back hand kind of trailing to catch the hair. That way, that way it's not landing on the floor back behind me and I have to pick it up later. So here's that initial cut line. So with that cut, I'll double check around the ear, pull the ear down, and then uh, just kind of clean it up a little bit. That way I know that it's good and seems like it's pretty straight. And it's always good to be careful around the top part of the ear. You got little folds there that you don't really realize that you have. And a lot of people uh, kind of think these are pretty safe and that you won't cut yourself. But oh boy, will you. Um, especially when you're cutting, you know, down there. <laughs> 
Uh, you can also cut up here. I've got a little mole back here that I'll cut sometimes, and then that'll bleed pretty good. Just like just like if you cut yourself shaving, it'll bleed for a bit. Um, but one of the big things is that um, you just want to be careful as you're going, and it's just it's just light pressure. You're not digging it in. You're just letting it run across the skin as it goes. And the more you do it, the more you'll learn a little bit about it. So, um, like especially for stuff in the back, whenever you come up, I've got a little bit of like a peak right here. And that peak kind of causes a weird change in direction for the clipper as you go. So I'm pretty sure probably everybody's got a peak back there. <laughs> But the uh, it's just it just seems like it's the, right around like the base of the skull that it can change that direction. So whenever you do get done clipping, or you think you're done, I would always recommend feeling that area out really well, and then using a mirror if you don't have like a set of bending mirrors and stuff like these have, where this the mirrors are on this medicine cabinet, and I'm allowed to point everything and check everything. If you don't have something like that, you can always feel it. But there's been times where I've left like a, a strip or something like that because I missed it when I was feeling it the first time. And then like the next morning you wake up to take a shower or something, you're like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> All right. So this is the kind of the Jekyll and Hyde moment. So this is what you know it'll look like when it's done, and then this is the side that hasn't been done yet. So, but that's just for the top part. Uh, we'll continue with the beard once we get the top part late, late roll. Once we get the top part done, the top part's kind of the easy part. We'll do that cut line up here. So that's pretty close to what it looks like when I'm done. I will, a lot of times I'll go over it one more time just to make sure I've cut everything. Also, as you're doing it, you'll notice that certain ways that you hold the trimmers, so whether or not you hold, held it flat against your head, or if you put it kind of uh, you know, 90 degree against your head, it will change the way how it cut the hair. Same thing with the direction that you went. So if you went up as opposed to going back, you might notice there's a slight length difference. Um, going over it one more time real quick, go all, going in the same direction, you can refine it to make sure that you've hit it all in the same way. And then for the bottom part of the neck, 
I always try and find like kind of where my neck meets my shoulders at the top of your traps and stuff. And I try and trim up from there. So that way you're coming just below the ear and coming up. That way you don't have any weird long, uh, you know, high back hair or um, any other kind of strange hair that you weren't expecting to have showing above your collar. Now if you're really hairy back there, I would recommend maybe getting either using a mirror to try and guide it that way you get kind of a straight cut that way it doesn't look like so like a like you took a bunch of rabbit nibbles <laughs> out of your out of your back hair and stuff but um luckily i've got like a little bit of like a fold or you know there's a little bit of like a crease in the skin or something like that that i can feel back there that kind of gives me an, an area that hey as long as i hit here i should be good so the other thing is that um, you want to always double check with really a good around your ears. They're easy to, with the, the little folds and stuff of your ears, it's easy to kind of miss stuff. <clears throat> so now I'm pretty much done with the top section. I should double check in the mirror. GoPro is about to go for a ride. So using the mirrors, I can kind of look at the back of my head and check for any missed spots. And it looks like I did pretty good. Don't have any weird stuff. Of course it's weird looking at the phone doing it. Now one of the big things to do now would be to check for level so you want to look at where your sideburns are and how they line up now not everybody is symmetrical and um probably not but you a lot of times have one ear riding higher than the other ear which for me the big thing is to always kind of make sure that i cut the beard and start the beard at the same spot for both ears so even if your ears One's higher than the other one a little bit or something. So which, you know, people that wear glasses will know about this. Um, because with the one ear higher than the other, it's able to, you're by cutting the beard to your ear, even if you're a little uneven, it still makes it look about right. So now I'll start using these clips. So these are set to length, different lengths. I'd like to use the shortest one first, and then that one I'll take and I'll cut just a little bit to kind of start a fade. So I'll pick a spot in my ear that I want to do. Um, so I'll do this upper part of the ear right where it starts to meet this little um, jut out section. And then I'll do that on both sides. So if you have a beard or if you have normal hair, uh, one of the big things to keep in mind is that when you cut the hair that's up high that feeds down, you'll notice that it seems like you cut it down lower. And the whole reason why is because you've got hair that lies down. down. And that hair that lies down, uh, when you cut it from up here, all of a sudden it'll seem thinner down here uh, just because that hair is now gone. So whenever you do it, just try and remember where you made your first cut at because if you try continuing these cuts at um, like what it looks like visually you can kind of put stripes in so if you thought hey I must have stopped about here well you didn't if you weren't paying attention real good so um, this is the next longer uh, clipper extension part and then this one I'll do probably to the bottom of this section here And then you always want to check to make sure that it kind of cuts straight. 
just like mowing your lawn, sometimes the clippers will miss the grass blade and then sometimes the clippers will miss your hair. The hard part is that when you're coming from away from your ear going back, you want to try and maintain whatever line that you were running. So if you're trying to run parallel to the ground, whenever your head's flat, you want to try and maintain that parallel line as you're coming back through. Otherwise, you, you may wind up chasing it. So where you wind up cutting it, and then you'll come back and you'll cut it again, you come back and you cut it again, and before you know it, you've got the thin beard going all the way down. So that's two. Here's three. So this one, I'm gonna do to about mid-ear, and then I'm gonna drag it out uh, the majority of the way through my cheek. Give it a second run. Oh, mid ear. Give it a second run. All right. Now, this is the last trim that I make. So, as you can see, my beard is already still kind of trimmed up from the last one, but but length of hair wise. So it's all trimmed up here, but once you start to get to here, it gets pretty long. But when you actually comb it down, you almost can't notice it that much. Just because of how it lays. So like if you were to take this and you had like still a good bit of, you know, blowout like right here. So like this, maybe this next step will help trim it out for you. So, but I like to just go to three lengths and then I pretty much stop. And on this one, I'll go just a little bit below the ears and trim it forward. And then it's going to get really close to my mustache. So I'm going to want to try and bring in my mustache as much as I can. And then I'm going to try and not hit the mustache. So as I come forward, I'll curl back up and then I'll make a run back. So whenever you cut and you hear that little clip, 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 that's you catching more hair and cutting more hair. So you can kind of tell, you know, if you did a good job coming through or not. Now real quick, I'll take the comb and just run the comb through it real quick to try and gauge how it'll look whenever I'm done and styled. So like right now you can see that it's cut super short at the top, fades slowly, and then I didn't cut it. At about that point. So that hair kind of lays down flat and helps grade in. So like there, that helps fade into the beard. So that way it looks like you've got kind of a cleaner cut on the cheeks, on the cheeks. And then it goes in the beard. Now this is the part that gets kind of weird and complicated. So with the beard, you can use um, the clipper extensions to try and set a length. And for me, I have trouble with that because whenever I set that length, because of the way the hair grows, it doesn't always work out. So whenever I cut, I'll have weird long and short patches depending on which direction I went in. So, but to do this, I'm hoping this stays down. 
what I'm going to try and do is clip almost like a straight line. So let's get the hair kind of frizzy out a little bit. And I'm just kind of practicing the line that I want to think I want to try and take. So in doing that, I don't know how well you guys can see it. It looks like I have a neck. <laughs> so it looks like it came in relatively well. I'm gonna eyeball it in the mirror a few more times and see how straight it looks. But it didn't come out bad. I don't went on the floor. So the trick, whenever I do cut my hair to help them clean this all up, is that I always take a shower after I cut my hair. And then by taking a shower, you get all of the hair pieces off of you. So normally I'm not doing this in a shirt. And then by getting all the hair pieces off of you in the shower, you don't have to worry about all the hair pieces being on you in here. But I'll take the bag and I'll throw the bag away first before I take the shower. And then, um, when, I, when I'm all done with the shower, I'll use the, the somewhat wet towel to swipe up the floor and the countertop and stuff and try and pick up all the other hair. And then normally it all um, turns out okay in the end because somehow in the washer and dryer, the hair comes out and then hopefully it's not on all the rest of the clothes, which I think so far I've been pretty lucky and it hasn't been on the rest of the clothes. Otherwise my wife would let me know. <laughs> so right now we're probably gonna look at final trim stuff. Boy, it's like a spring in that front part of the beard. So the big thing for now is that the way this is trimmed, it's shorter and probably more presentable than it was before but it's probably not quite finished the big thing is going to be once i kind of mess with it a little bit i'm going to figure out little areas that i want to trim off also uh sometimes it might be one of those things where you might want to wait until you're styling uh so once you've taken your shower once you've cleaned everything up a little bit and then um that's when you do your final trimming. So, but right now, the big thing that I want to try and do is get a little bit of this edge trimmed. All right, it looks not bad. One of the weird things with the having to wear a mask as of late 
is that it really caused um, the hair to take a turn just below my chin. So one of the neater things that I found was that there's some masks where the mask is longer and that allows you to, um, you know, your beard to kind of hang down the way it would normally. So if you're able to find something where maybe it hugs your face and then allows your beard to hang down, you won't have so many of the weird kind of annoying wrinkles in your beard and stuff that you you acquire now in the the state of the world. Okay. So it looks like from me looking up when I did the cut that I gave it a little bit of a downward angle, which I'm good with. But I do want to kind of soften the edges a little bit. So I'm just trying to hit like the outliers. Try and soften it just a little bit. Ooh, that shirt's hairy. All right, so not bad. So, like as you can see, I do get a little bit of hair above the above the t-shirt, and. It gives it just a little bit of a cleaner look to come in and kind of come down back by your ears and pull down and then also try and clean the neckline up just a touch. All right, so not bad. So, like as you can see, I do get a little bit of hair above the above the t-shirt and it gives it just a little bit of a cleaner look to come in and kind of come down back by your ears and pull down and then also try and clean the neckline up just a touch. So Today I'm wearing a suit and tie, so you probably won't notice with the collar coming up here. And then um, sometimes I'll trim my mustache a little bit, but honestly, I, 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 the mustache is my weakest part of my beard. <laughs> so um, everybody's beard grows differently. And for me, my beard uh, does not connect to my mustache. It's a little weak in here. Same with this. So I normally leave my mustache kind of long. And then my mustache is actually pretty long on the edges. That way when I pull it in, it looks like it blends in a little bit better. If you ever trim a little bit lower than what I trimmed here, and you have this kind of mustache that doesn't connect, it won't look quite as connected whenever you're all done. It'll look like you've got a mustache that doesn't quite connect. So, which is fine. It all depends on whatever look you're going for. And then you can always do crazy stuff and style it and, you know, do a handlebar or something. <laughs> so, but I'm pretty good, I think, with it right now. I'm going to take a shower and then style it. And then we'll see where we're at after that. All right. So, here we are, fresh out of the shower. It's not bad. As you can see, it's fairly fairly even you know roughly even so i'm pretty happy with it pretty pleased came out not too bad um there's some 
little spots that are a little annoying. Um, for me, at least, it's the like these curly hairs over here. So this side doesn't have those curly hairs. This side's fairly straight. This side's the only side that really curls for some crazy reason. So, but um, to go into what I do after I take a shower, normally I'll give it a quick comb through. Nice thing about a shorter beard is it dries much faster. <laughs> so you're not flinging water everywhere. I take just a little bit of uh, beard oil. And I'll need less beard oil because I've got less beard for it to try and go through. So the beard oil a lot of times is for the skin down below the beard to help it. A lot of them have tea tree oil and some other good things in it. So, and it's not about getting it in the beard. It's about getting it like kind of like down to the skin. Having the beard oil in will kind of put a little bit of weight on your hair. So that when you're done doing this, it'll be a little bit more professional looking, a little bit more less crazy. But that's not beard oil's job. Beard oil isn't meant to make it look better as a um, like a style stuff. That gets to where you get into uh, beard butters and uh, beard balm. Whoop. So I'm just taking a little bit of beard balm. Normally I just scrape it with the back of my thumbnail. That was about as much as I would use with the long beard. So this time I'm gonna trim it up just a little bit. Um, not nearly as much. Get in your hands, warm it up a little bit. And then what you'll notice is that some of the outliers that I have will catch it and will actually start to sink in. So normally with the beard balm or beard butter, it'll help tame the crazy ones. But as time goes on, the crazy ones will never come back. <laughs> so, especially depending on how your day goes. Because sometimes you've got a nice easy day. However you styled it, it will hold for a while. If you've got a long stressful day, and stuff's not quite going your way, you might notice that your beard's going crazy. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do a trim just those hairs or not. It does seem they are significantly longer. But the whole thing will come down to whether or not I'm nitpicking. And if I cut this chunk out, if it's going to wind up looking like I cut a chunk out of my beard. <laughs> But, see how it goes. Uh, looks relatively even. Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't go crazy when I shake my head anymore. <laughs> so. Trim a couple long hairs. I don't know if you guys can see these. Okay. That's where I'm going to leave it. A lot of times, if um, like my mustache ones are getting a lot longer and overlaps on my lips and stuff. A lot of times I'll just take the scissors and I'll cut a straight line, kind of like that, through it. Uh, this time though, they're still, still manageable. So I'll leave it for now. Cause there's nothing like trying to eat a sandwich or something and then biting down on your mustache or pulling it in or something like that. That's, <laughs> that's a little annoying. All right. So that's pretty much how I wind up trimming my beard. Now, I've never done that particular technique before where I just came in, kind of set my head at a certain angle and came in and cut the hair like that before. That was pretty weird. Normally I just put on a thicker spacer and then I run the spacer through my beard. And then that kind of gives you a rough, even a length for most of the hair and stuff. It all depends on how much of it you're able to catch 
direct, depending on which direction your hair grows. Now, I actually went through and trimmed it back up to round out the beard afterwards. And this beard, as it sits now, is that beard after it was trimmed shorter, <laughs> about the two months later. And the only thing that I've trimmed thus far is just another haircut, well, a couple haircuts, actually. And then the fading <laughs> from up by my glasses down to the cheeks and stuff like that because I, I do kind of like having the thinner look up here going into the thicker look down below so and then this is a stage of the beard that I do kind of like from this side <laughs> this side not so much uh, the way my hair grows this hair over here gets all kind of wild and crazy so this is a big moment for where uh, beard balm comes in because the beard balm will actually give some weight to the outliers, the ones that are kind of sticking out. And then that way, like if I if I had beard balm in there and then I styled it real quick, it would help them lay flat. So even brushing it a little bit helps it lay down, but you can still see how crazy it gets over here compared to this side which looks very clean just <laughs> the way it sits <laughs> without even brushing. So, but that's pretty much how I do my beard and then cut my hair. So it's pretty simple. Um, whether or not you want to do the same thing is up to you. I kind of like it just because it's relatively clean. You wind up using a lot less uh, <laughs> shampoo on your hair. And then, uh, of course, you use more beard oil as long as your beard gets low. <laughs> so, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good one. Oh man, is that the sixth time we've done the intro now? <laughs>